All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the College of Natural Science and Mathematics uh, presentation on undergraduate research. Uh, we're going to start it here in just a minute or so while we're letting people file in from the waiting room. Uh, my name is Ryan Chernick. I am one Hello. of the admissions counselors here at the University of Toledo. So we're happy to have all of you joining us today. We've got some faculty members uh, from the University of Toledo's College of Natural Science and Mathematics to talk good, about their undergraduate research, as well as talk sort of about how you specifically can get involved in undergraduate research as a student at the University of Toledo. So the way tonight's gonna work, um, we're gonna see some great presentations from our faculty members who have very graciously given us some of their evening during the semester, which we all really appreciate. Um, I'll talk a little bit from the admissions perspective about what we can do from here to get started next year as a U Toledo Rocket. And then we're gonna end with a Q&A session. So if you have any questions at all about the College of Natural Science and Mathematics, specifically about research, or I'm here to help as well with those admissions next step questions, um, we are happy to cover all of that for you. Um, there is the chat feature here in Zoom. As you all know, we've been using Zoom for two and a half years. If you have any questions that you would like to ask uh, publicly, you certainly can do that. You can ask it to everybody. But if you'd like to ask a question anonymously, please feel free to send it to me. Uh, my name is Ryan, but I'm here as U Toledo Admissions, and I will ask that question on your behalf. So that way only I see it, and then I can pose it to our panelists. But it is 6.03, and I do want to keep us on schedule because, again, our faculty members were very nice to give us their evenings to hear about their research. So we're going to start off uh, with Dr. Heather Conti from the Department of Biological Sciences. Um, so as Ryan said, I'm, I'm Heather Conti. I'm an associate professor in biological sciences. But the hat I'm wearing today and what I'm talking to you about is research. So I'm also the director of undergraduate research experiences for biological sciences. And I think what you'll find at U Toledo, in our college, in our department, at every level, we're really, really invested in getting undergrads in the lab, exposing them to research. And um, I think the fact that biological sciences has me, someone in this capacity, really speaks to that. Um, I want to encourage everyone to reach out to me at any time before you get here, before you step on campus is great. I've had students that have started in my lab the first day of class because they've reached out to me after a day like today. I also hopefully have one of my students with me, Mara. She can also answer some questions at the end if you have any um, specific questions about what it's like to do research in the Conti lab. All right, so I think first you can ask the question, right, you hear about research and it's important to have research experience. And a lot of you, if you are interested in, in biological sciences and NSM, you probably are interested in careers in medicine, but it can be a little bit confusing and, and trying to decide what's the best path to take? What's your best next step? And I think knowing what a research university is and what our focus is will really make the decision easy to come to U Toledo because we have many opportunities for research. So what is a, a research university? Um, it's committed to research as a central part of its mission. So that means that at least 20, research scholarship, scholarship doctorates are conferred every year and your, the university has to have a vested monetary interest in research. So they have to have certain amount of money they spend on research. And importantly, right? so all of the faculty, research faculty are generating re research, they're studying a specific problem. And um, with that, we're producing graduate and undergraduate students. So unlike some um, smaller liberal, art, art, liberal arts colleges that may not have research, they may not have graduate students within their department, right? we have the opportunities, the research opportunities here. We're small enough, you're going to have a lot of interaction, a lot of direct interaction with faculty, grad students, and you'll find, because I'm talking about biology, um, our faculty are committed to engaging undergrads in our, our research in our lab. Oops. Hmm, I wonder why it's not letting me advance. Huh. 
Ryan, any idea? Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, if you want to, I guess I can't use. All right, I, I guess I can't use my um, my up and down arrows. I have to use the on the screen. Um, okay, so why is research important as an undergrad? Right, we, we can't deny, you all need to build your resume, you all need experience, you all, all need to make yourself competitive for whatever the next step is. And research will absolutely do that for you. And if you have any questions about that, please, please ask. But hopefully by the time you're done um, here at Utilino, you realize that hands-on research is, is really the best way to, to learn science. Um, so some key points, right? When, when do I start looking for research opportunities? Today, you'll hear some general information from me. You'll hear um, about some great research um, from Dr. Gianfrido. So, right, early, right? That's when you start looking for research opportunities. You're before you step on campus, when you step on campus, you'll hear from me if you are a biology student and you're in um, NSM 1000 classes. Um, if you, again, if you are bio, reach out to me. And you can also check out our faculty's research, which is something that you can start doing right away. Um, so I, I just have, um, I'm not going to go to the links or anything, but if you go to any department at Utilino, you can find the research tab and you'll find um, the faculty research there. We have a little bit about undergraduate research, how you can find opportunities um, that relate to that. But if you click on faculty research, and again, you can do this for, for any department. Um, you'll find a list of the faculty and our areas of research um, here. And then if you click, uh, for example, on mine, have a little bit of information, usually um, describe our research in, in simpler terms so it'll be easier for you to understand. You'll see a list sometimes of our students, our publications, any opportunities we may have in our, our um, lab. I think another, as I said, the whole university is committed to finding research opportunities for students. And to speak to that, we have an Office of Undergraduate Research, with, which is university-wide. Any, um, any student, not just bio students, um, can check this out. They can help you find research opportunities as well. Um, all right, so I don't, I don't mean for anyone to remember any of this. I think the important thing is you your bio, you see me, you, you reach out to me, and then I'm going to help you um, go through this. You'll hear again when you start taking classes. But if you go to the Office of Undergraduate Research, they can um, also kind of give you some guidelines on finding uh, faculty mentors, how to start thinking about science, how to start thinking about a research project, how to develop a proposal and then even how to seek funding. And as um, even as a freshman after your first year, you can get paid to, to do research over the summer. And the summer is a great time to get um, a concentrated amount of research done as well. Okay, so what do you, what do you need to do, right? You need to, to start to absorb some of the things I'm, I'm talking about today. Importantly, reach out to faculty, email us. Um, make sure you make it a little bit personalized. Um, it, it is a, a little competitive to find um, places in research labs. There are a lot of students trying to find those opportunities. So you need to, to make yourself stand out somehow and ask questions later if you need some advice on that. And the big thing is don't give up and find me if you're bio and I'll help you find an opportunity. Um, so I'm going to talk really broadly about research in the Conti lab. And I'm doing it in this way so that you can just start to think about research, think about the questions that you need to ask yourself um, to understand where, what, what field, what, what area you would be most interested in, what type of lab is more, most appropriate for you, for your personality, for your level of commitment. So these are all, I'll go through kind of how research in the Conti lab works, just so you can start coming up with these questions. Um, I think the first disclaimer I have is that 
this semester is still different. I, I think we're, we're getting back to normal and, and hopefully by the fall we will. Um, I normally have, uh, as I say here, um, about 10 to 15 undergrads in the lab at any given time. I have a big, big lab. For the past couple of years, right, it's sometimes been none or sometimes has just been a few. Right now we're back up to 10. So we're definitely getting back into, um, into the groove of things. Um, also important to keep in mind that all labs are different. And hopefully I give you some idea about how we are and the questions to ask other faculty mentors uh, how their lab is run. Um, so in our lab, we have a PI, me, my, the principal investigator, uh, a postdoc, three grad students, 10 undergrads. Again, that might not be appropriate for you. Maybe you want to be in a smaller lab where you get, a, not that my students don't get individual attention, but you work directly with the faculty at the bench. I no longer do research at the bench and I'm writing grants and, and teaching. Um, so you have to ask yourself what's, what's important. I study the immune response to fungal infection in patients with immune defects. It's no doubt relevant to human health and disease, right? It's not hard to make that connection. Maybe you know you are interested in cancer research or you want to study um, plant physiology. We have some great labs that span many different areas of research, right? So you need to, to, to decide what's going to make you excited and get you up in the morning. Um, when you're an undergrad, I think it's sometimes confusing what research really means. And like, like I said, right, you might not even understand what a research university is. And I think first is to understand that research can look very different for an undergrad and that's fine. You might want to just volunteer in a lab and learn just some common lab duties, wash glassware. We have a place for that. I have students that'll just volunteer for a semester or a couple of weeks. Um, and, and then I have all the way up to honor students that have a project of their own, they have a thesis that they write at the end, and they um, eventually, um, some of them are even included on publication. So there's right a lot in between. So I, I won't really dwell on this. I'll, I'll let you ask questions about that. Um, I think the next presentation will get an idea about what research also means um, for an undergrad and, and how you can be involved. Um, and then also just start keeping these things in the back of your mind, right? You can do research for credit. That's um, always um, a good thing, um, right? You have it on your transcript, but you don't have to. Um, but, but especially if you're doing honors, you do um, have to do research for credit. And as I mentioned, you can get paid to do research. Um, if you get one of the fellowships from the Office of Undergraduate Research, they're competitive. You have to apply for them. They look really good um, if you get one of them. Okay, so, and then this is just, if you want to, to go there, this is um, at the Office of Undergraduate Research, taking you through developing that proposal and then applying for that, that summer funding. And we have it for freshmen, and then subsequently you can apply um, any year you're here. Okay, so that, I just wanted a, a quick broad overview of, of what research is, introduce myself to everyone, Make sure that you reach out to me um, when you're here, um, reach out to me before you're here and, and ask any questions. And, and hopefully um, we can um, get some questions for my, my student as well. Okay, I will stop sharing my screen. Dr. Conti, very much appreciate your time. And again, for those of you who do have questions, we'll cover those at the Q&A okay. at the end All so right. we can make sure things keep moving and we have plenty of time for presentations, but um, I know that we'll have a lot of questions because our, our presentations always get so many great questions and that's the, the fun part about doing this. Um, so thank you so much. And we'll yeah. go on to the next presentation now um, for another professor from the University of Toledo, uh, Dr. John Frito, who works in the chemistry department, but I feel like the department name is longer than that. Chemistry and biochemistry. There we go. So <laughs> you're the professional, you're the expert. So I will, I will turn it over to you to tell our students a little more about your research and kind of what the chemistry and biochemistry department has at UToledo. 
Great, thank you so much. Let so hi everyone. Uh, so I'm here as a representative of the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry. Uh, and I am actually uh, the chair of undergraduate recruitment for, uh, for our department. So I'm the point of contact for all of you that are interested in these disciplines and want to know more about how our department can help you to obtain your degree. So um, as Dr. Conti mentioned, uh, our college and more broadly the University of Toledo is highly committed to uh, provide the research opportunity for undergraduate students. Uh, we have uh, very good graduate programs, meaning we offer graduate degrees. So we have the research facility, facilities that allows our students to get their master or PhD degrees. In our labs, we also host and we also train undergraduate students. So in, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to talk uh, a little bit more in detail about uh, the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry here. So um, the type of research opportunity that we provide are very diverse because we have so many different labs that study different type of chemistry. So in the slide here, let me get my pointer on you can see all the different disciplines that we study in our department, including green chemistry, that is the type of chemistry that uh, aims to develop environmentally friendly chemical processes. We have synthetic chemistry, that is the field of chemistry that allows us to create new molecules. We do a lot of biochemistry as well with chemical biology and biomolecular stru structure and function uh, research. We work on nanomaterials. We work on environmental chemistry. We work on drug development and we work on analytical chemistry that is my specific discipline and I will discuss a little bit more about this later in the presentation. So if you are interested in finding all the opportunities that we provide, you can find this page in our department website where uh, we, you can see the research from all our faculties. So you can read a little bit more about what we do. Uh, of course, some disciplines will catch your interest more than others. Or if you have interested in more discipline, you can talk to different PIs and decide, OK, this year I'm going to focus on this type of chemistry. Next year I'm going to focus on another type of chemistry. Um, regarding uh, the opportunity for research, uh, we actually offer uh, a freshman course that is Chemistry Chem 1910 that is called Surface Survey of Research. So in this course, all the faculty have a presentation about the research ongoing in their lab. And because this course is at the freshman level, it's actually very helpful. I get many students that get interested in what I do after I present my research in this course. So this gives you really a feeling of what's, is go of what's going on in the what is going on in our department. More so, if you decide to do research, you can get credit for it. In fact, we offer um, research credits for courses like CAM 20, uh, 2910, 3910, and 4910 that you can register according uh, of if you are freshman, sophomore, junior, and senior. So one of the, as Dr. Conti uh, mentioned, doing research really helps you develop your CV beyond what many students especially in, in liberal art colleges can do. Why I say that? Because if you are very committed to your research and you do good, you are good at it, you do a good job, you can actually be included in peer peer-reviewed scientific uh, publication that are published in international journals. So for example, these are like four random examples that I took from my department. These is a paper from uh, my group. 
and both authors are undergraduate students. Uh, we have also here a paper from my colleague, Dr. Michael Young, and the middle author here is an undergraduate student. We, from my colleague, Dr. Karuna Ratne, you can see the first author is uh, an undergraduate student. And from my, from my colleague, Dr. Whaley, we have that the second author is an undergraduate student. So I was telling you before how you actually can explore different fields of chemistry. And this article gives me an opportunity to, make, make a, to explain you an example of it. These students that you can see here, uh, Beth Zindelman, she worked for several years into organic chemistry in Dr. Wei Lab. And now she's working in my group in a field that is completely different, but can really give her a very um, comprehensive um, research experience. So uh, research experience really give you the opportunity to grow and uh, um, and to build your knowledge. And when you get your when you graduate and in, in you build your CV, having a peer-reviewed scientific uh, scientific publication really means a lot. Both if you are looking for a job in the industry or somewhere else, but especially if you decide to move ahead with graduate school or medical school. So this is my research group. And uh, my research group, uh, similarly to Dr. Conti group, includes graduate students and many undergraduate students. So for example, in this picture, 50%, I will say, of the people that you can see here beside me are undergraduate students. So what this means that when you join a research lab, you start also interacting with graduate students that are students that have been in your shoes a couple of years before you. So they can give you really precious advice on how to proceed with your degrees and most importantly, what to do next. So let's go a little bit more in details about what, what I do. I give you an example of the discipline that I study that is analytical chemistry. So what is analytical chemistry? So this field of chemistry is the science of obtaining, processing, and communicating information about the composition of the matter, meaning we measure molecules or ions in different media. And uh, in my lab, we have three main lines of research that involve food safety and quality. For example, we want to measure how uh, pesticide distribute in the food. We have a huge line of research related to uh, environmental chemistry. Uh, so we monitor environmental pollutants in water, but also in wildlife. So we want, to, we want to understand if my water is contaminated, how that environmental pollutants can contaminate the fish that lives in the lake, for example, or can contaminate humans. We want to study how small molecules, small environmental pollutants can interact with building blocks of our bodies, such as proteins. And this, um, help me connect with another line of research that is bioclinical analysis. So sometimes, uh, you know, measuring the amount of small molecule in blood can be very complex because beside your small molecule, you have a lot of other things that can interfere. You have blood cells, you have lipids, you have uh, white blood cells and so on. So the work that we do in my lab aims to really find a very small amount of molecules in very complex systems. So the one example of the research that I want to show you today and actually, oops, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if you guys can hear this. I think I had something recorded on that slide. Let me try to go back and delete that noise and I apologize for it. Okay, we should be back. So one type of research that um, 
um, that we do in, uh, in my lab that is related to environmental research is focused on a new class of environmental pollutants that are called PFAS or PFAS or perfluoroalkyl um, substances. Why these contaminants are very critical to be studied is because uh, they have been extensively used in the manufacturing industry in the manufacturing industry for the past five decades. Uh, so they are used in our Teflon cookware. They are used in um, flame retardants materials. Now they are using even like in like almost everything you can buy, everything that is waterproof, for example. However, in the early 2000s, some concern uh, st um, started to raise about the effect on human health of these, uh, of these contaminants. And actually it was found that accumulation of these uh, molecules in the body can cause some health effect. So now uh, what the legislation is doing is trying to limit the use of these molecules in the manufacturing industry. However, these molecules, I'm not going to in, the, in detail of the chemistry, but because of the structure and the type of atoms that they contain, they are very resistant in the environment. They don't break down easily. That's why they are called the forever chemicals. And the fact that they don't break down easily, it means that they can distribute in uh, the food chain, they can distribute in the environment and actually contaminate humans at so many different levels. So it is important to understand where these contaminants accumulate because these will allow us to find um, to find to correlate their presence to diseases or to find strategies to actually clean up our environment from these chemicals so in this map you can see how each dot it represents sites that have been contaminated with this type of chemicals everything started in 2001 uh, with the ohio river that where there was a huge spill of these contaminants from a, a actually a production plant that was using them and then it spread in the whole us so and even up to 2018 the pfas crisis as how they call it has been only increasing it's not a problem that is go is going to be solved in uh in any short time so in my lab we develop uh, some traps some sorbents some probes that can remove these PFAS from the water, but also from blood and from tissue and allows and allow us to measure them. So we use different chemistry to try to attract these PFAS and trap them as, as we want to do it. So the type of concentration that we are able to to extract from many different samples, water sample, but also blood samples, is called part per trillion. And if I need to give you an example of what that means, is imagine you have a drop of water in an Olympic sized swimming pool. That's how low we can go when we detect these analytes. So once we develop our method in the lab, then we go ahead and we screen different type of samples. So for example, work that has been doing has been going on in my lab was started to screen drinking water, tap water, our river water from the mummy water, and also Lake Erie water. So in uh, in this uh, in this project, actually, I have two um, very productive undergraduates that are working on it with the assistance of our graduate students. So what they are doing, they are testing new materials that will allow us to extract a broad number of these PFAS from biological samples and from environmental samples. 
So um, this is about all that I want to tell you about my, uh, about my research. And now I will leave some time for some questions. Any of you do have questions, again, you can either ask them in that chat box to everybody and then I'll read them as we go through. If you would rather ask your questions anonymously, you can just send them directly to me at UToledo Admissions in that chat box and then I'll read it on your behalf. If you also would like, you can ask your questions out loud. You can just say them, um, feel free to come off mute and ask them and then we can discuss from there. Uh, the first question, and I'll kind of get us rolling while you all are typing them up. The first question I have for you folks, um, do students who major uh, in an NSM degree, do they have to do research in the College of Natural Science and Mathematics or can they take on research endeavors in other colleges? So I can't speak for chemistry and biochem, but in our department, we have a lot of majors and you know, less than 20 faculty. So we absolutely encourage our students to find opportunities outside of the department. And we have many of our students who are pre-med that um, do research on the health science campus with one of the, the med school faculty. We have mechanisms for um, you to still receive credit. So you can still receive credit for doing research with them. You can do your honors thesis with them as well. And I also help students find opportunities over there too. And I think with our, within our department, just about every single faculty member um, collaborates with researchers on the health science campus. So there are those opportunities too, even if you're not, at the med school, if you're doing research with us, a lot of times you're collaborating over there anyway and vice versa. Yes, and vice versa too. In fact, um, um, beside the, we also have collaboration with the College of Pharmacy and the College of Engineering. So we really have students that exchange research experience. In my, I can speak about my department. We have so many students from chemical engineering that decide to do research in our department and our students that decide to do a research in chemical engineering. And the same happens with uh, medicinal chemistry that is actually in the department of pharmacy. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And then another question kind of along those similar lines, um, students who start doing research with one major, if they decide to change their major, and I guess this is more a question about higher ed in general, if they change their major and they have, you know, in their history research in biology, but now they are in physics, is that seen as something that's still a positive? Are they just looking for experience at all in a laboratory setting? Or do they want to see more connection between what your end degree is and what you started as an undergraduate? So, I, I mean, me personally, I see value for both, right? You're here for four years. You want as many different research experiences as you want. So, I mean, it's just, it's, you can make research be anything you want it to be, right? Maybe you do want to try a, right, a, a chemistry lab. Maybe you want to try an immunology lab. Maybe you want to, you know, um, see if you like plant um, research. So I think that that's valid. That's absolutely something that makes you more competitive, more marketable or you can be devoted to one lab and, you know, and spend your whole four years. I have students that start as freshmen and work all four years with me. I have students that come in for a semester. Um, like Dr. Gianfrido said, I have especially some engineering students that just want to be there for a semester to get some experience in a, in a wet lab. Um, so honestly, you can make anything work for you. And I think there's value, pros and cons both ways. If you're only in a lab for a semester or a short, short amount of time, the likelihood of getting onto a publication is lower. But I also don't feel like that's the end all be all. Um, it's great for an undergrad to get on a publication. And I have it, Mara's here. I saw Mara's here. She's included on publication we just submitted today. Um, Right. It's great, but you don't have to be on a publication to have a quality research experience. 
and to make you more competitive. Absolutely no way. You don't have to. Awesome. Thank you. So we have a question that just came in. Um, how early can a student start uh, contacting faculty about research opportunities? So how early in their academic career? Um, and is there any research program opened for freshmen this summer? So I assume they mean incoming freshmen, people who are getting ready to start their first year at UToledo. So, so sorry. Uh, so, um, Nothing formal for students coming in, but if if you are local, like I, I'm meeting with a high school student on Monday that's interested in doing research over the summer. Um, so if you can, absolutely reach out and there, there might be opportunities. There's, there, there's just no formal mechanism to find you any, at least in biology, um, to find you any opportunities over the summer, but I've absolutely had students do that. Yes, just go through our website, see if something interests you and just shoot an email to us, you know? Um, the worst thing that can happen is that maybe we are busy and we will not get to you back to you immediately, but we don't bite if you want to, if you are interested and you want to try something over the summer, give it a try. See what interests you most and give it a try. And then how early can, how early normally do students start contacting and how early can they start contacting faculty about getting involved? Is it like their first semester? Is it over the summer going into it? So uh, again, I, I think anything can work. At least in biology, we can get a student into a research opportunity at any point. Because I think it's important, whether you're a freshman or you're a senior who perhaps changed your interests, what you see yourself doing with the rest of your life and, and realize, you know what, I do want a research experience, right? That's great. Like I, I, I definitely encourage that. If you know you want to do research, you just, you, like I said, you just really can't start early enough, right? There are a lot of students looking for opportunities and we will find you one. But if you want to be in one particular lab, right, because you like you love fungal immunology, right, I only have so many openings. So you're going to want to reach out as a freshman. And if I don't have an opportunity that semester, I may next. Um, so you I can have someone email me right as soon as we hang up from this call, email me or you'll hear from me, at least in the biology department at. Um, the NSM 1000, the introductory classes you're going to take, you're going to keep hearing from me. Um, we have different opportunities. This year we had um, trick-or-treating throughout our um, all of our labs and it was a way for students to meet um, meet all of the, the grad students and, and kind of they toured the labs and saw the research we do. So there's many opportunities. I, I, think, I think for me, the big thing is it's stressful everyone's stressed right now just in the environment that we're in and um you're going to start as a freshman you need to get good grades that's important right it's just don't let finding a research opportunity stress you out we'll help you you'll find it um just yeah i i just early <laughs> that that's my official answer <laughs> And Mara, I wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of introduce yourself and talk a little bit maybe about how you began your research endeavors at the university from the student perspective. Yeah. Hi, my name's Mara. I'm a junior majoring in biology, and I've been in Dr. Conti's lab for about three-ish years. Uh, I started the spring of my freshman year. I emailed Dr. Conti and had a meeting with her and kind of discussed what different labs there were and which ones I'd be interested in, and it was that easy. That's awesome. And where are you from originally? I'm originally from Columbus, so not okay. too far. Very cool. Uh, and then were you biology all your whole undergraduate career? Yep. And what are we Always. thinking about doing after we graduate? Uh, I'm planning on going to medical school. I 
just applied and interviewed. So I'm waiting on a response. Very nice. Good luck. And I'm sure everyone shares the sentiment. Good luck <laughs> with the process. So if anyone has any questions for a current student as well as faculty, uh, we are happy to answer those. And we have another question that came in um, for chemistry. Would you email whoever's name is attached to the topic that you think is interesting? Or is there a specific contact person you should go through? So for chemistry and biochemistry, you can directly contact the, the professors. Um, if you don't get any feedback or response, feel free to contact me and uh, will distribute and contact me and tell me what you are interested into. And I will distribute the email um, to my colleagues and see if we can find a good opportunity for you. And I know you both are kind of, you know, really covering uh, the biology and the biochemistry and the chemistry. Um, as a whole, if students here today were going into physics or they're going into environmental science, um, would you say it's a similar process across the college for you contact the person who you think you would want to work in their lab or that's teaching your course, whatever it might be? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's also, you know, if you get on campus and you get settled, one of the easiest ways is to reach out to a professor you have in one of your classes, you're going to be taking labs, you're going to be interacting with the TAs that are in the lab that, that are teaching the labs. Those are our grad students. Talk to them, right? It's easy to talk to, a, easier to talk to a grad student sometimes than to, to reach out to faculty. I think we're easy to talk to, but hey, a student can be intimidated. Use your labs, right? Talk to the grad students, learn more. And that's really a great way those grad students come back to us and say, you know, we have this really great undergrad in the lab. If they reach out to you, you should definitely get back to them. So I think that that's, that's another way. And I'm sure that's the way it is for um, all of departments. I, I do not know if there's an equivalent of me in every department in NSM, right? The, the director of undergraduate research for biology. Um, but I mean, the big thing is I, I'm here if you need help, but I still encourage all students to reach out directly to faculty. I think, I actually think it's an important thing to do. Um, it kind of, it, it helps you think about the research. You have to go through everybody's um, research page and, and think about what's important to you and then reach out to them, which you know, is sometimes a hard thing, but an important thing to learn how to do, so. And then after all, research is about initiative, like me, Dr. Conti, and many others, research professor, nobody knocked it out of our door and said, can you please do research? It was our initiative to do research. So if you want to do research, have that initiative to see what topic interests you, to contact the PI, to talk with your instructor, to talk with the TAs, and see what fits you best. Real quick, could you tell it what is a, uh, a PI and a TA? Oh, sorry. So PI are the professors that are principal investigators and TA is a teaching assistant. So our uh, TAs are usually the graduate students that assist with the labs or with the lectures. Awesome. Thank you. And then Maura, this question is for you primarily, uh, but um, would you say it was difficult to balance being in a research setting and taking all your classes and preparing for medical school? And I know that we have a couple students here who are also thinking the pre-med path. So how did being a researcher fit into kind of the overall balancing act of being a college student? Yeah, so uh, any like NSM class is going to be hard. Uh, they're designed to be hard. Uh, but in terms of like fitting in with scheduling, it helps to make a schedule. It's not incredibly difficult. Uh, especially if you're working with grad students, they understand they took physics, they took OCHEM, they know they're hard. Uh, so there's, there's always a little bit of flexibility. Uh, for me in particular, research was something I really wanted to do. It was one of the reasons I chose Toledo over other schools. So I knew it was more of a priority to me than some of my other extracurriculars. So a lot of it came down to prioritizing and making sure I had dedicated time towards studying versus towards being in the lab, uh, being involved in you know, side projects that come up in the lab and anything else. 
Awesome. Thank you. We just have a few more questions, but if anyone wants to send any, a couple more in, we have about eight minutes, you know, I can, we can try and get through them quick, um, but we'll cover these last ones that I have here. Um, if a student wanted to do research at the U Toledo Medical School or on the medical science campus, could they do it and how would they go about doing it? Um, so absolutely, you can do research med school. Same thing, um, if you're, if you're from any department, you will reach out to those faculty directly. If you're bio and you are finding that overwhelming, because sometimes it is difficult to go to some of the departments, the websites on for the med campus, because sometimes the clinical faculty are also listed and you, you're right, you don't know if they do research and, and it can be a little overwhelming and there's a lot of divisions and departments. So if you're bio, I would recommend reaching out to me and I can, I can help you narrow that down. So the search is a little bit easier, but honestly, you reach out to the faculty there and um, a lot of them, most of them encourage and have undergrads in their lab as well. So. Awesome. Thank you. And then this is, you know, could be for all three of you, though, more I know you've spent most of your time at Toledo, but what is it about Toledo's science community that is unique from other colleges, universities, institutions um, that keeps you all either working here or here as a student? Um, for me, it was kind of the transparency between uh, the different PIs, the different faculty members and uh, the undergrads uh, from the get-go. Research was something that was really stressed for us as like a really, really like op great opportunity to, for us to get in earlier than I would have maybe at some other institutions. Um, when I came and did my Scholars Day a couple years ago, uh, one of the highlights of the tour was going to the different labs that were active at the time and talking both with the investigators, but also the grad students and the postdocs and a few undergrads in the lab. Um, so I think one of the biggest things for UT is it's very like interconnected between, you know, the undergraduate side of the research and the grad students. Awesome, thank you. Um, this is just a normal student life question, I suppose. So Maura, I assumed you lived on campus if you were coming from Columbus. Uh, yeah, I did. So could you just talk a little bit kind of about the living on campus, how it was transitioning to, to college and, and living here? Uh, it was really, it was not, hard at UT. UT is also, you know, it's a good community. Um, being in biology, being in NSM keeps you busy. So you make a lot of friends really quickly in your classes, a lot of study groups. Uh, I didn't find the transition too difficult. I lived in uh, the Honors Academic Village for two years for my two years required. Uh, part of it was at home because of COVID. Um, but overall, it wasn't a bad transition. Um, Everything's really close to get to classes, get to dining halls, get to the library. It's a huge, huge deal for us, but um, it's not, not a hard transition, I don't think. Awesome, I'm very glad to hear that. As someone who recruits freshmen to campus, that it wasn't too hard. Um, that's all the questions I had sent in. If anyone has any last second questions, um, type them immediately or ask them out loud before we wrap things up. Um, but as we do, again, I want to remind everybody, um, if you have questions about, you know, enrolling at UToledo, taking those next steps to becoming a rocket, please feel free to reach out to us in undergraduate admissions, to your admissions counselor specifically, or you can just call our office and we are all always happy to answer any questions you have about getting started. Uh, those financial aid packages, and I know everyone's looking forward to getting, they should start coming out around the beginning of March. So we have been taking in all the applications, hopefully you filled out for scholarships, taking into account your merit awards, um, FAFSA information, and that all comes out. What you see in your MyUT account is pretty much just the numbers, but that booklet we send out has a lot of great context. It includes a glossary of information and terms that you might need to know. So if you look at the numbers on the website and they're not making sense, please, please give us a call. And we're happy to walk through it, go through all the numbers with you so they make sense. But that booklet you get will also help. And, and I know for me personally, I like seeing it myself, seeing it all written out and everything uh, makes it a little bit easier. Um, but with that being said, I want to thank all of our panelists so much this evening for giving us some of your time. I don't know if anyone had anything they wanted to say before we completely wrap up anything else they wanted to mention 
Give me a second. Uh, I, sure. I wanted to just follow on, on something that Mara and how it, um, at, at U Toledo, you, she felt like she was part of a community. And I think that research also can do that for you. I always, when I help a student find a research lab, I call it their research home because right, it really is somewhere to, to socialize, see how right the next, you're working with grad students and you have a peer group that can help you and you can interact with, right? If there are other undergrads in the lab and it's just, it is an automatic family. And I think many um, faculty, many PIs, right? We, our research is really important to us and we really do see our undergraduate researchers and all of our, our um, researchers as family. So I think that, that that's something that deciding to do research can offer you as well, especially if you're struggling to find any other sort of um, support system here, which I, I don't think you will, but, but research um, can definitely provide that for you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. And again, thank you all so much for your time. Uh, I, I think the best way to close it out really is a, a good old fashioned go Rockets. Everyone enjoy the rest of your nights. Uh, have a great rest of your senior year. Good luck. Uh, hopefully you attend U Toledo. We would all love that. But wherever you go, good luck with your future academic endeavors. We are doing three more of these. So if you have an interest in learning more about diversity and inclusion in the College of Natural Science and Mathematics, you want to learn more about um, some of the careers that our alumni have gone into, please go back to the website where you registered for this, and you can register for those events as well. I'm going to hang out in here for a few more minutes. So if you did want to talk one-on-one -on -one about admissions, next steps, financial aid, anything like that, I will be here. We can chat. Uh, but otherwise, I, I think that's a very successful NSM presentation. So thank you, everybody, so much for coming out.